some of us know our ABC and everything else and still hardly making any money education is not bad but it's not the answer not for a Christian God gave you a gift God gave you a talent he wants to use it I'm sure that some of us have gone through job loss this year you started another job maybe you've changed two but think about job when we're applying for a job when we're seeking a job we, we it would not come real consciously but many times we have high expectant expectations that when we're applying for a job somebody will get it before we do somebody is better qualified than we do for the job high negative expectation then you talk about sickness you hear that the flu is going around the cold is going around oh boy that's me again I'm next to catch the flu I'm next to catch the cold we have high negative expectations and God doesn't want that then about relationships our father or mother had a divorce and we're thinking and saying to ourselves well I guess I'm next on the list I just may have a divorce. My relationship might not work. Or if you've had one failed before, you're entering a new relationship saying, I just don't think it's going to work out. I'm hoping. I have my finger crossed, but I don't know if it's going to work out. Everybody in the world have high expectations. Too often times, it is very negative. Listen, I'm talking to Christians today. Even those that are watching abroad and around Belize when you look at the word impossible and unable even if we do not articulate it many times this is our thoughts we see everything in, and that's because we know Jesus that's because we're Christians but we see life impossible we see our situation impossible we see ourselves unable but what if you would remove the first two letters of each word what do you get? Exactly. Take off the two stinking letters from the front. As Christians, we need to see things as possible. We need to see things as able. What is the difference? Are you listening? What is the difference between possible and impossible? Able and unable. Able. Anybody? What's the difference between possible and impossible? Able and unable. What's the difference? Your mental address. Your mental address. We all have one. Do you know that? What's your P.O. box? Negative? We all have a mental address. Listen carefully. That mental address will determine if it's possible or impossible, if we're able or unable. Our high expectations will either be positive or negative. What's your mental address? Do you live in the past or in the present with your eyes on the future? Unbelievable. Most Christians live in the past. They determine the future based on their past. And the Bible says nothing about that at all. Let me give you a few examples of great people in the Bible who had severe negative expectations. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 2 to 4. Listen. Abraham said, Lord God. We're talking about the father of our faith. Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? Listen, seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. God promised Abraham a child. It took a while before it came. And Abraham already had high expectations, negative expectations of what? That his slave, one of his heir, would become next in line. And listen to what God told him. God says, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your body shall be your heir. Abraham saw things negatively for a period of time in his life. He thought that his heir 
one of his slave workers would become the next person that would take over. God says, no. Have you forgotten me? God had to change his mentality. Send him outside in the night sky and said, look at the stars. See if you can count them. He says, so will your descendants be. Great people, many Christians have negative expectations. And that needs to change for the new year. Ruth chapter 1 verse 19 through 21. Listen. Now the two of them came to Bethlehem. And all the city was excited because of them. And the woman said, is this Naomi? Sister Noemi? Is this Naomi? Listen. But she said to them, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. Can I give you a quick backdrop to this? This woman went with her husband and two sons to the land of Moab. Didn't pray about it. Didn't ask God. Just left because there was famine in the land. And while she was there, her husband died. While she was there, her first son died. While she was there, her second husband died. So coming back to her hometown, she already had high negative expectations. The people knew her before she left. And when she came back, they were happy to see her. And she said, what are you happy about? What are you happy about? Don't even call me Naomi, which means happy. She said, call me Mara Bitter. High negative expectations. Numbers chapter 13 verse 32 and 33. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. There we saw the giants and we were like grasshopper. Listen, in our own eyes we were like grasshopper to these people God had already told them I'm giving you the land go take it I am with you and they went and saw it and they came back and said there's no way we can do that that sounds like Christians today the Bible says what you can do how you can do it the Bible says how you're gonna end up in life and we're saying I, I don't see that they said, in our own eyes, we look like grasshoppers. You know, in our own eyes, sometimes we look like failure. In our own eyes, we see defeat. In our own eyes, we don't expect things to work out. We all have high expectations, but mostly high negative expectations. So how, how can we have high positive expectations? Would you like to know? How can we have high expectations? Ne uh, positive expectations but before I show you how you can have high positive expectations let me show you some people in the Bible that had high positive expectations in Genesis 32 and 26 and Jacob's uh, God said let me go for the day breaks and Jacob said I will not let you go until you bless me Jacob was tired of his old stinking life and he went to God. He grabbed the whole of God who came in human form. And he said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Jacob had high positive expectation. I will get a touch from God. He was very positive in his expectation. 1 Samuel 17, 45 and 46. Then David said to the Philistine, which was Goliath actually. You come to me with a sword and a spear. And with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of the armies of Israel. Whom you have defied. This day. Now listen carefully. High positive expectation. This day the Lord will deliver you into my. Here is the little chap. He was a small guy. In front of huge Goliath. Goliath was a champion. This was a sheep guy. Goliath was a champion. He was small before Goliath. All the armies of Israel were hiding. They hid from this giant. And here comes the sheep boy. Small with nothing but a sling. And he went to huge Goliath who called the little sheep boy a dog. Now listen. Listen to what David said. High expectations. He said, I will strike you and take your head from you. Well, nobody in Israel could do that. Nobody would dare confront this giant. And here come David, the sheep boy, and said, I know whom I serve. 
and I am telling you today will not pass. I'll, t- I'll rip your head off your neck. And do you know that he did? He had high positive expectation. Then what about Daniel? Shadrach, Meshach, and? Oh, let's say that again. Shadrach, Meshach, and? Under the bed you go. Listen. These boys were thrown into the raging fire. But just before they were thrown in, listen to their high positive expectation. If that is the case, our God, which is our God today, our God we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Now listen. And He will deliver us from your hand, O King. High, listen. In 2024, you will need high positive expectation. And you can have it. But you must train yourself. So how can I have high positive expectation? Despite, despite all that has gone wrong in my past life. Can I ask you a question just before I quickly continue? Has anything ever gone wrong in your life? Can I see your hand? Wow, look at that. How can I have positive high expectation after all so many things have gone wrong in my life? Listen carefully. Key number one. Key number one. Look ahead and never behind. Look ahead and never behind. Leave the past in the past. When you throw your garbage away, do you go back and open it? Guess what you would get? You would faint. Leave the past in the past if you're going to have high positive expectation. Listen to Paul. Philippians 3, 13, 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do not do, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press. Do you know who Paul was? Paul was a serial killer. Paul murdered Christians. He imprisoned them. He brutalized them. When Jesus saved him, he had to determine, I'm going to leave that behind me. I know what I did, but I will not let that torment me anymore. I will not bring that into my future. I leave it behind. I'm leaving the past in the past. That's how you can have high positive expectation for the new year. Look at these two birds. Do you know that God created both of them? One is a hummingbird and the other one only think he is humming. Well, one is a hummingbird and the other one is a vulture. The difference between positive and negative expectation is what you're looking for in life. Are you with me? Please take your eyes off what they're doing there. Put your eyes here. Because what they're doing there will stay in the past. You're moving in the future. The difference between positive and negative expectation is what you are looking for in life. The hummingbird and the vulture. The vulture looks for dead things. Fly the same sky like the hummingbird. Created by God, lives in the same skies in the world, but the vulture looks for dead things. An animal alive can be passing by and the vulture is not interested. The vulture wants to see dead things. When the vulture sees a dead carcass, he goes after it. But the hummingbird, the hummingbird does not look for dead things. The hummingbird looks for living insects, for living animals, for things that are alive. We have to be like the hummingbird. We have to want to be positive. We leave dead things behind. We leave the past in the past and we look for things that are full of life. If you have friends that are dead, get them out of your life. If you have things that are keeping you back, get them out of your life. If you have gossipers in your life, get them out of your life. You need things that are alive. You have to be like the hummingbird. We're all in the same world. Some will move forward and some will lock behind. Why? Because of what we're looking for in life. K 
Key number two. Discover God's plan for your life. You know, mostly, mostly we look for things based on what we have been educated with. In other words, from the time we were small, we went to school. Do you know what school teaches us? And I'm not saying education is bad. Don't get me wrong. But do you know what education teaches us? It teaches us to work for someone else. Everything we do in school prepares us to work for somebody else that has a job and has a business. It never teaches you that you have a plan, you have a purpose, and you have talents and giftings that God expects you to thrive with. Discover, and I say discover because it's already there. Discover God's plan for your life. Watch this. Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, I know the plans I have for you. You weren't a mistake. You were born with a purpose. You have a blueprint. God gave you giftings and talents. You tap into that, you become an immediate success. He says to give you a future and a hope. In Ephesians 4, 7 it says, However, God has given each one of us a special gift. Right where you sit today, you have a special gift. And it's unlike anybody else's gift. You have a gift the day you were born from God. Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him and bring him before great men. You see this little third world pastor? Are you looking at him? This little third world pastor with the gift God gave me, I have come before great men, multi-millionaires. Because of the gift that God has given me. You have a gift in your life. Your gift is not to labor to build somebody else's kingdom. God gave you a gift. When you seek God and tap into that gift, you become a success. Some of the wealthiest people, listen carefully. Some of the wealthiest people in the world are wealthy not because of education but because of their giftings and talents from God. Let me give you a few examples. Vidal Sassoon. Do you know that Vidal Sassoon was a British hairstylist? Businessman and a philanthropist. Do not miss the word philanthropist. He was not wealthy for nothing. This man invested his wealth in the lives of other people to bring them up out of misery and poverty. This man, without attending high school, didn't go to high school, has a net worth of $200 million. Did not go to high school. Some of us know our ABC and everything else and still hardly making any money. Education is not bad, but it's not the answer. Not for a Christian. God gave you a gift. God gave you a talent. He wants to use it. Then you have Gucci. Gucci. He was the one that invented the Gucci brand, Puma brand, Samsonite brand, Louis Vuitton brand. His net worth is 22 B billion dollars. He never went to high school 22 billion dollars and never went to high school what happened the man tapped in to the gift that God gave him Peter Jackson New Zealand film director screenwriter net worth 4 billion dollars never went to high school You sit here today, you have Jesus in your life. And you're struggling. That's not God's plan. God wants you to thrive. The answer is not education. The answer is turning to God. Seeking Him to find what He created you for. And when you discover that, you become a success. None of these men knew Jesus yet succeeded. Why? Because they tapped into the talent God placed within them. Even the non-believer have giftings and talents from God. But you who serve Jesus, 
Why should you serve people in the world when it should be the opposite way around? God gave you giftings and talents to make you be the head and not the tail. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See yourself as a success, not as a failure. See yourself as the boss, not the employee. See yourself as having abundance and not borrowing loans. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory to God who is able. Look at the words in yellow. God who is able. All glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us. Let's read all the yellow words together. God who is able within us. God who is able within us. Your God who is in you is able. High expectations. Positive expectations. Key number three, create a vision for your life. Without a vision, you won't know when you arrive. Think about how serious that is. Suppose you jump in a car in Belize City and say, bye, I'm leaving. But you didn't have a plan of where you're going. How do you know when you're going to get there? Do you see how stupid that is? jump in a car a rental car and say bye i'm coming back a week from now and you start driving but you don't even know where you're going guess what you won't know when you arrive true but if you jump in a car and say i'm going to dangriga i know when i get there with a vision in your life you will know when you have arrived and the problem is most Christians don't have a vision for their lives. In Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 it says, Remember the things I have done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God and there's none like me. Now listen. Only I, God says, can tell you the future before it even happens. Everything I plan will come to pass. God had a vision. God says, I can tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. Because I envisioned it. And it's going to happen. You see, when you have a vision for your life, you will know what's going to happen. You're going to have high expectations that it's going to happen. If you say to yourself, I will be rich one day, but you spend every penny you make. It's a dream that will never come to pass. Vision will create self-restraint. Do you know what a restraint is? You put a restraint on a dog, on your dog, because you don't want the dog to go anywhere else except on that chain. That's a restraint. A vision will create a restraint for your life. Because if you have a vision, you won't be able to do everything everybody else is doing because you're not going where they're going. And it so happens they're going nowhere. Do you understand that? If people are always buying clothes and jewelry, but you have a vision of where you're going, you can't buy clothes and jewelry because I have a purpose, I have a plan, I have a goal. And I have to get there, so I have to use self-restraint. Listen to this. Sorry. Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no revelation, which is vision. Where there is no revela revelation, the people cast off restraint. Have you ever seen the way people live in the world? They party, they smoke, they drink, they sleep around. They live like today is the only day. And that's why many of them die young. And that's why they don't have anything. And that's why they have a lot of addictions. Because they have no self-restraint. As a Christian, we must be self-restrained. We must have a vision. If I want to build a house, then I can't take three vacations for the year. Do we understand that? I might, if I'm building a house, I might not be able to take a vacation for the next 20 years. But guess what? I'm going to have a house. Vision. People.
that get active in church and people that just attend church. Sometimes we look at the ones that only attend church and say, wow, I wish I was just like them. Come to church and leave. Come to church and leave. Look at their life. People who have a vision for their Christian life attends church all the time. They stay close to Jesus all the time. They read their Bible all the time. They worship the Lord all the time. They pray all the time because they have a vision for their spiritual life. While you're reading your Bible, people are on the beach drinking. They're not going anywhere. You're going somewhere. You don't envy them. One day they will envy you. Vision will make suffering, obstacles, and disappointments bearable. Sometimes life can become unbearable. Would you agree? Yeah? I love that hat. That thing with the time on it. Yes. I like that. Listen, when you have a vision for your life, suffering is unimportant. When you have a vision for your life, obstacles are unimportant. When you have a vision for your life, disappointments are bearable. In the Bible, Jacob, Genesis 29, 20, Jacob wanted a beautiful woman so, Donald Trump, badly. He went and he worked so, seven years for this beautiful girl and after seven years he was supposed to get the girl and they told him no I'm not I'm giving you her sister he said well I'll work seven more years 14 years for one woman you might say is it worth it if you want what you're looking at it's worth it it makes obstacles bearable suffering bearable when you have a vision, Jacob wanted this young lady and he got her at a high cost, but he got her. Jesus, and I close with this, in Hebrews 12 and 2, the Bible says Jesus didn't mind suffering the cross because of the joy that was ahead of him. What was the joy? You! The joy was you. The joy was me. Jesus had a vision. His vision was, I want sinners. And it made the cross bearable. The nails were not too long. The thorns were not too long. The beatings were not too hard. Because he saw you and he saw me. A vision will put you right where you need to be in life. Listen, I close with this. You can have high expectations for this new year. But if you don't have these three keys, guarantee you by the end of January, your, all your expectations will be crushed. Because it's not just because you have high expectations that will come to pass. You must be determined that with Christ I will achieve my high positive expectation and nothing will stop me. Nothing will turn me away. It's going to happen. Amen.